What's up, everybody? It's Brad and Andrew from Auto Off Topic. The coloring contest is back and now much improved thanks to super listener Frank Eck. The contest is simple. Complete one of the pages of the coloring book found on our Facebook page or the Auto Off Topic coloring contest Facebook page in any of two mediums. Digital using any computer program or analog, be it colored pencil, marker, crayon, watercolor, however you choose. One entry counted per medium per person. Each individual can have a total of two entries, one per format. There will also be two age groups, age 15 and below and ages 16 on up. Links to the coloring book pages can be found on our Facebook page and the Facebook page for the coloring contest. Electronic entries, including scanned entries, can be sent to us via email, autooftopicpodcast at gmail.com. Paper copies can be sent by snail mail to Auto Off Topic Podcast Contest, 83 Lakeshore Drive, Georgetown, Massachusetts, 01833. Note, all hard copies received will not be returned, period. The contest runs through November 30th. The companies and owners groups donating prizes are Mitsubishi Motors North America, Adventure Driven Design, Forced Performance, Palladian Trucks, Northeast Mitsubishi 4x4, Mitsubishi Montero Owners Group of the USA, Florida Mitsubishi 4x4, and Mitsu Nation Facebook Group. Please enjoy this free contest, and don't forget, entries must be postmarked by November 30th, 2017. Good luck. All right. Welcome to episode 60 on Off Topic. Hello, Andrew. What's up, Brad? Not too much. I think I must have moved my mic here. It seems a little high. Six zero. Yeah, we're uh, well past fifty on our way to a hundred. Yeah, yeah, we now round round up to a hundred. So yes, so this is a hundredth episode. Sixtieth <laughs> <No. laughs> no, episode. Six zero. Holy cow! Pretty good. That is pretty good. Thanks for tuning in for sixty episodes of this, or however many you've listened to, whether it be one or. I'm going to give people 20. the benefit of the doubt and assume they are super fans and have listened to all episodes. Yes, everybody has listened to every episode. That's right. I like I like your way of thinking here. Mm-hmm. I know it's not true, but that's okay. No, that's fine. The early ones were meh. The later ones were meh. <laughs> hey, if somebody can't make fun of us, if I can't make fun of ourselves, we can't make fun of ourselves. Uh, people are going to make fun of us anyways. That's true. So... Put ourselves out there. It's time to happen, right? Yep. Welcome to the internet. That's right. Uh, what did you do this past weekend? Anything car related? Uh, negative. No? No. I uh, got a lot of projects accomplished around my house, which is not what our 60 episode listening audience wants to hear about. So, yeah, no, nothing car related. I had too many other real life responsibilities in the house to do. So I'm getting ready for winter and all yep. that good stuff. But some stuff coming up. I have to do winterization of a few cars, but... It's going to get pretty cold. It's already pretty cold. It's like 32 degrees out right now. Did you take the water out of the cold? I did. Okay. Yep. All right, good. I put coolant back in, too. Oh. Yeah. Double did whammy. <laughs> just going to run it on air. Actually, honestly, what I did was I just did straight water in it, so I just drained it out, and then I poured a gallon of coolant in it. All right. So I didn't like drain it all out. I just drained out like a gallon's worth. Okay. And tested it, and it's strong enough now, so we're good to go. All right. Because the system holds like a gallon and a half. Mm -hmm. So it's a little better than 50 50. All right. Fair enough. Yep. Um, She shall work. Yeah. She shall work. So um, on Saturday, Stephanie and I took the cross trek to the. N-E-R, so New England region. What did you track across? <laughs> New Hampshire. Boom, boom. It was the SCCA. Um, we haven't done a lot of TSDs this year because it's a lot of work. We haven't done any TSDs this year. That's the first, right? No, no, no. Uh, Jordan and I did Winter Challenge. Oh, okay. There just hasn't been that many in this region. Just It's a lot of work, and I know the people that put them on usually have been very busy with right. other stuff. And you can't blame them because I don't get paid to do it. So no. It's all nope. strictly volunteer basis. Nope. In fact, Jordan volunteered to work checkpoints this past one, correct? Yes. Uh, so it was the Big Lap TSD, which is typically held in the spring or, no, sorry, midsummer. Frost Eves is in the spring. I can't, I'm not even, I don't even remember if they did Frost Eves this year. I think they did. Yeah. Because I remember them posting up about the signs. Yeah. Okay. So I think they did do Frost Eves this year. 
Maybe we did do Frost Heaps. I don't remember. We've done so many over the few years. I'll kind of blend together. And uh, still not very good at them. No. I've done at least 10 to 15 of these things. Probably even more by now. Horrible at them. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. At it. We just want to drive fast. <laughs> it's, uh, there's like. Also, we're bad at math. Yeah. We're, which doesn't help. We're really good at staying on course, though. Like, we can follow the directions and not get lost. Usually. We're like, lately, pretty damn good. But being on time is like, like, we're within the minute, but within a minute is like 100 points. Yeah. So. By that point, when you're scoring 100 points on each leg, when the ideal is well, 100 zero. Is the maximum, right? No, 200 is the maximum. Oh, okay. We've gotten that before. Yeah. But it goes by second. So it's not like 200 is like we really screwed up. It just means we screwed up by like four minutes over 30 miles. Well, it's yeah, it's tenths, tenths of a second. Okay. Um, so, yes, yeah, it's even better. Yeah. Well, no, sorry. Um, you can, The second, so 60 seconds is converted to decimals, so it's like... When you get to, um, so 30 is 0.5? Yes. So it's point, so it's one point for every minute. Right. No, it's 100 points for a minute. For a minute. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So yeah. it's 100 points for a minute. Yeah. So if you get 200 points. So if you're 30 seconds early or late, then it's 50 points. Okay. And that's, that's what I was going to yeah. See, this is why we can't do the math. <laughs> we can't do math at all. <laughs> no. I think they called fractions, Andrew. Fractions. I, I should acknowledge that uh, Jordan's girlfriend had never done them before, and her and her roommate. Uh, Former roommate. Oh, oh, all right. Well, whatever. They're best friends. They uh, participated in the novice class, and they won the novice class. On their first time. But they are also scientists. So... Yeah. <laughs> And Andrew and I were educated by the same school system. Yeah. <laughs> and neither one of us can do math. No. Coincidence? I think not. No. I was really good at geography, so that part's okay. Yeah, we're good with maps. We're not good with maths. Um, regardless, so Stephanie and I did it. And um, English, the word games they played to try to trick you up. Yeah. Get all those. Nailed it. But. Yep. Uh, so stop, stop, stop 50, which is uh, half of. It's 30 seconds. It's, it is, but it isn't. Oh, it would be a pause 50. It's a pause 50. So that includes your decel and XL time back up to the yeah, uh, continue at speed time. It's actually not. It's continue average you know, speed. You know what we should do? What? Honestly, we should both do one with somebody who's good separately from one another and then come back at it together again and try to do them properly. Yeah, properly. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. So uh, Stephanie and I did it, uh, and we've done them before together, so we didn't murder each other. Um because I honestly, I just wanted to do it as an excuse to drive around all day with her and the dog in the car and the new car and the new car, yeah. which the cross track on like back roads, six speed, definitely slow car fast and a blast. I so bet it is. We were usually early, not by much. Yeah, well, we usually are early because we like to drive. That's the other thing. Like the, a brand new car with really good suspension just kind of it's so smooth and stuff you don't realize how fast you're going on these roads because they're i mean you're only doing like I mean, you have a speedometer and all but yeah but you're only we doing, know about your math skills so yeah. maybe you can't read that either but the, the car is actually uh doing the auto check it was really accurate but of course so. the tires are the correct size yeah they're brand new yeah the car's got oh, 200 miles on it uh we went over a thousand oh i'm sorry a thousand miles on it but um no there's some really fun roads there's a couple class six roads which are not maintained. Yeah. But they weren't crazy enough that you could not pass them in the car. Yeah. Well, I, I assume that you wouldn't take the brand new, haven't even made a payment yet, cross track over some really rough roads. Yeah. Never bought them out. Got eight and a half inches of ground clearance. Does it really have that much? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. That's like more than the Montero. It's like equal to the Montero. Oh, that's not. On stock wheels. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense at all. I can't even fathom why that's true. Yeah. So, my math skills are so bad, I can't equal eight and a half to eight and a half between those two vehicles. <laughs> so, regardless, it was a big lap of New Hampshire. So, it kind of started in the Lakes region, Lake Winnipesaukee area, and we just kind of went around. And Which I heard you know all about. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I spent many summers up there. So, occasionally, we'd go down the road and be like, oh, I know where this is. Or we'd pop out somewhere. I'm like, oh, that's where this road goes. Yeah. So, that part was kind of neat. Um, a little past peak foliage, but it was still really fun. 
Well, you're not really looking at foliage because you're driving and she's map reading or vice versa. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple places that were pretty cool views, so. But, you know, so we did that Saturday. That was, like, all day. Yeah, I wished I went, but next time. Actually, is there another one before February? Probably not. No. no that's challenge is probably the next one. Mm-hmm. All right, well, I'll have to get myself hyped up to do that one next then. Yeah, it was a double rally weekend, so... On Sunday, which means for me it was a double missed event weekend, the Rallycross group held an event at the Canaan Motor Club in New Hampshire, which is new. Mm -hmm. Uh, They built like this smallish racetrack. It's kind of like maybe two lanes wide and then has a cart track kind of built into it. It's like a mile and a quarter. Okay. Road course, obviously. Road course. Oval. Yep. Uh, But they... Are winding down their season, so they they let them use part of the track and the infield to run a rally cross, which is pretty cool. So it was a mixed. Yes, it's not mixed uh, surface. Rally cross is not normally mixed surface, but this is more like a best way to describe it is like a global rally cross course where it's pavement and dirt mm-hmm. without a tabletop jump. Right. Um, clearly, because it's street cars, but yeah, no roll cages. You don't jump them. The track is like really nice like interesting looking it doesn't have like um it's not a lot of buildings around it support it yet but i definitely want to go back for a track day yeah i'll go for track day um and they do drifting up there too which is kind of cool it uh, looking at like the overhead view of the track i can okay. see why it'd be a good drifting track because it's a really tight technical it looks like a little ebisu or like yeah, a kind of that kind of or like place. a scuba it's like something small like that it actually reminded me of some of the purpose-built drift tracks that you see in japan yeah. So it just was really narrow, not, you know, not big sweeping corners, a lot of tight corners to link everything together. Yeah. And I don't think you get super fast during track days. And there's not like a, because there's not like a ton of runoff room. Yeah. Well, it's like the track day you did at NHMS where you did like 120 on the back stretch, you know? <laughs> oh, it was a front stretch. Yeah. Then, Whatever. Uh, but you're on the NASCAR part of the oval. So yeah, yeah you can get 100. But when I did that, that was like the only road course. Yeah, there's like four now. Yeah, they opened a bunch of new ones. So there's a bunch of new tracks that I want to try. Like, I guess Palmer's really... It's Palmer slash Whiskey Hill, they call it, because it actually has like like five or 600 feet of elevation change. That's a big elevation change, actually. Yeah, Yeah, it's really neat. Does uh, Canaan have elevation change? A little bit. Cool. Not as much as that, but Whiskey Hill actually kind of like goes uphill. I'll show you the video afterwards. I assume it would have to if it goes up 500 feet at some point. Yeah. It also goes downhill by that logic. And then you've got, there's like a new one in the, uh, in New Hampshire near um, 16 and 25. It's really? the, um, like right outside of like North Conway? Yeah. That's the uh, Club Motorsports. Oh, Tamworth. It's in Tamworth. Yeah, yeah. Club, uh, Club Motorsports. Yeah. Are they, are they doing public events there? I thought that was strictly a private track. It's a they're all private tracks. Well, I mean, I thought it was mostly, like, club members only, like a golf course. Well, there's that, <laughs> but these tracks also have to make money by selling track days. Right. So, yeah. It's not like... The thing is, with a track like Thompson or all these tracks, I I guess the way they skirt a lot of insurance is that they are not spectator tracks. Oh, definitely not. By not having spectators, you can eliminate a lot of the insurance. Okay. I just thought it was... I thought that the one in Tamworth was pretty much strictly for members only, like, you know, Wedgwood Country Club. No. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Um, and then I was challenged by our guest, our former guest, Dan Downey. Yes. Of Downey Dirty Racing to a Daily Driver WRX face-off. Now, I'll have it be known that you asked me for my prediction Last week. There's a record of it, so I can't deny. Yes. Uh, and I think my prediction was you were going to get smoked because he rallied rallies all the time in stage rally and rally cross and everything and whatever. Anyway, this is true. We'll, I, get, we'll, get, we'll get to the results later on. But I had forgotten um, how many years it's been, was. really, since I've rally crossed. Because we did a lot back in, like, 2007, we did. 2008. We did. Yeah. Um, I also showed up not realizing how much pavement there would be. On snow tires. Yes, because yeah. I didn't want to ruin my all seasons. 
which also honestly probably wouldn't have been. It probably a top wouldn't have better. Yeah. No, actually, though, there, I have Michelin Pilot Sport all seasons, which are apparently really good all seasons. Okay. So maybe I would have been a little quicker, but it doesn't matter because the snow tires gave me lots of fun slippiness. Was it loose on the pavement, too? Yes. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Um, when it wasn't understeering due to snow tires. Right. See, that's the thing with a... Here's all the excuses. Uh, with <laughs> Sun a, was in his eyes. Don't worry about it, guys. <laughs> with a regular WRX of that generation, um, you've got all viscous diffs. When you switch to, like, Jordan's STI, that's got the magic diffs in it. Okay. Which definitely make a difference on pavement. So I've actually never driven this WRX on an autocross course, on a rallycross course. It's funny. I've actually rallycrossed that you car. You have yeah. the exact car, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I've all, the only Subaru I'd ever autocross or rallycross was my STI before, which was a different... Or Jordan's STI you drove, too. Yeah, totally different driving experience, believe it or not. Different power, different transmission, a lot different. And the magic diff. That's right. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'll admit... It I'll also doesn't it. matter because Dan Downey was driving the same WRX you were. In 05. Okay, one year newer, but the same car. All right. He had 17-inch summers. Which helps. But then the crazy thing, right, he ended up beating the entire mod all-drive class. Yes. So I went for a ride with him, uh, and it was really, I think it was down to tires, but... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He won. He won. He <laughs> won within the rules, and he won. He did. Tires, driver skill, everything. So. It's a combination of everything. He's not, he's not rusty, because he does it all the time. He beat the entire mod all-wheel drive class, which is impressive. Yeah. I don't really care uh, because it was for fun. And for fun. fun. Uh, It got me. I get the the hunger again. I uh, I was like, man, I really missed doing this for like the last like 10 or so years. Yeah, I haven't done it at all. And uh, it's really, really, really fun. I rode as a passenger in Jordan's car, and that was, like, a mistake as well. I've so. already signed up for the Wolf Chase Rallycross. In so. the WRX? Yeah, I mean, I signed up for the WRX. Uh, we'll see if I get the new snow tires mounted up. It's the same class I could always uh, uh, co-drive Jordan's car. It doesn't matter. It's okay. same entry, like, whatever. Um, so, Whatever. Maybe I should throw some axles in the Saab and go, too. But uh, definitely, um, it has lit the fire to definitely finish the town, which was my plan anyways, for track days and autocross, just to get out there more, just be on track. But you can use the WRX for now to do a few rallycross events. Yeah. uh, I don't want to run that too hard, because it is a good daily. Too late. And I have a uh, (laughs) purpose-built car that is... Ready to go and... Not for Rallycross. No, but I have it for, like, playing with on track and stuff. Yeah. Actually... You also have a purpose-built SUV for driving when you break your WRX. This is true. So it doesn't matter. Um, but, actually, this uh, event is so smooth that I would run the talent. Oh, seriously? Uh, a guy ran his brand-new 1,000-mile Focus RS. Okay. And got fastest time of the day. So wow. uh, It was mostly pavement. I and mean, you can watch his video. He hammers it on the pavement and then yeah, just kind of cruise the dirt. He was really fast. Yeah. Like, it was, it was, v- watching the videos between him and somebody else, it was like two different classes of if, vehicles. If anyone is curious, you can go to our YouTube page, Auto Off Topic Podcast, or it should be just Auto Off Topic on YouTube. I did upload two in cars. They are not impressive, but if you want to watch them, you can watch Andrew fumble his way around the dirt. They're there. <laughs> The car actually pendulumed really well. I mean, I'm making fun of you, but I wasn't even there, so it was a blast. It yeah, was like I, I'm sure I would have looked. I would have looked exactly I, the same because back when we were rally crossing all the time, we were pretty close anyway. So I think that I probably would be in the same. I used to win more often, but no, you like, did beat me. <laughs> you know, not not dying that. There's permanent record of that too. But um, it, it doesn't matter. It was so much fun. I was like, I don't even care that it seems like I'm 10 seconds slower than everyone because. This is an absolute blast. So yeah, uh, I'm jealous. I need to move some things around and get some cars I can use for events again. Instead of having just a bunch of street cars, mm-hmm. broken street cars at that. Um, anything else for the weekend? 
Like I said, I didn't do anything car related. All right. I did nothing at all. But uh, we do have a few project car updates. Want to do that? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Um, I think I talked about the 99 Montero is back, running fine. Well, we fixed it on Thursday, and we haven't recorded since then. So probably. I think I did that last week. Okay. Do we talk I, about my truck then? No, we haven't covered your truck because okay. that was after the last podcast. But uh, on the 89, I think we talked about the power steering pump just basically let go of the seal and just. Yeah, the front seal started just puking fluid just everywhere. All, like it was just sitting in front of my house, the for sale sign. There was a big puddle of power steering fluid yeah. underneath it. Uh, turns out the uh, a DSM or Galant VR4 power steering pump from same the first pump. gen, same pump, mm. swapped it right in. Uh, I used one, and works great. Oh, excellent. It's all fixed now. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we're going to deliver that this weekend? Uh, yep. You've heard from him again? I have. Excellent. So there's a buyer lined up, so that's getting taken care of, which is cool. Sweet. About time. Now, Moving it on. What about the red truck? The red truck that runs. everybody's been eager to hear about. The red truck runs again. Yes. Like, actually runs again. Valve seals have been swapped. Yeah, and it did exactly what it was supposed to do. It no longer blows blue smoke out the back anymore. Mm-hmm. Now it's just a little white exhaust smoke, um, which is mostly due to carburetor tuning. Yeah, it smells rich. Yeah, it's, it's white and black smoke, I should say. It's, it's definitely running rich. So I have a couple things I have to do. Um, there's a, I don't know if it's a leaky wheel cylinder or a seeping brake line somewhere, but it definitely needs the brakes looked at and the carb tuned. And that's pretty much it to drive it again. So that should be back on the road. Turns signal switch, right? Yeah, that's whatever. I mean, I have hand signals. <laughs> Technically, yes. Yeah. All right, she's the old joke. I'll put a BMW badge on it. No, I won't need him anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I, I, our friend Eric has a turn signal switch. I just have to pay him for it at some point. Mm-hmm. But that's that's almost non-consequential to getting the vehicle back on the road. Brakes are important. Yeah. Correct carburetor tuning is important because it gets bad enough gas mileage as it is when it's running correctly. How do I, you tune that carb? Uh, wizardry. Like any carb. Okay. But do you have to, like, swap out things? Or no, no, no. It's just, just uh, dial adjustments. Oh. Yeah, it's not like a like a Weber downdraft with emulsion tubes and jets and all that stuff. You yeah. could get to that, but that's not what it needs. It just needs it's got to turn the fuel mixture screws and yeah. idle screws and all that stuff. So. And there's, like, a little exhaust leak, but that's not a big deal. Well, that's the gasket between the manifold and the downpipe. All right. So it's just completely blown out because I remember when we put the head back on, I bought a new gasket and we got it there and we were almost ready to put it all together and realized the gasket was the wrong size. So we tried to make it bigger or try to make it. Yeah. We tried to make it a little bit bigger. Oh, right. It's the one that looked like the Subaru gaskets. Right. And the kid was like, we don't have anything like that here. I'm like, really? Because it looks just like a Subaru in a head gasket on a manifold gasket. Yeah, exactly. And... Yeah. So whatever, it didn't quite work out right. So I need to get another oh, gasket. Oh yeah, that. I remember that now. Um, actually, it might not even be the gasket's fault. It's probably because the screws need to be taken out, retapped, and new uh, hardware put in because it's not exactly like sealed tight. So maybe like uh, a new gasket, and then like um, like uh, or just cut it and sleeve it. The exhaust, like. <laughs> The uh, exhaust, like, dope that you put over it to, like, seal her? No, because it, it needs new bolts. The hardware is junk. It's it's destroyed. Oh, all right. It, it needs new hardware. It's old and rusty, and it's, it gets hot and cold and hot and cold, and then covered in salt and mud and dirt, and just it's rusty and gross. So it needs new hardware. That'll solve the whole problem. It's well, got, like, spring bolts that go there. Yeah. So it needs those. Well, I'm glad to hear that's back together. It is back together. Thanks to you and Jordan helping me out with that. And, and Tony, my dad. And yeah. Tony, yep. So it's... uh. Almost there. I didn't know how those were held in. That's really weird. Like What's that? the way, like valve springs. Yeah, it's the first seals. time either one of us have ever done valve seals. Actually, I didn't realize they were. I thought they were pressed into the head. Nope, it's all the way around. They just sit on top. Yeah, and then like valve springs are just these two wedge pieces that go in the retainer, They're like keyway kind of things, and they just clip to the valve. Or right, they got keepers. Yeah, and then they somehow don't fly off. It's funny because both of us have been deeper into engine repair. But never have done valves because usually what happens just is send the we head send out. the head out 
and the whole head gets rebuilt by the machine shop. Yeah. And they do the valves, and you get it back, and it's like, oh, I put this back on the car. Yeah. So it was just a whole new experience for us. Yeah. But it was kind of cool to learn something new. Yeah. Um, I bought the tool. It was like twelve dollars at Harbor Freight for the. It actually worked pressure, really well, and it worked really well the whole time. I mean, it's a very simple tool. It almost looks like a corkscrew for a wine bottle. It's basically a miniature coil spring compressor. Because that's basically what you're doing. Yes, yeah. compressing springs. Um, that was the only sketchy part. Was you had to hold the tool with the fully compressed spring in it in your hand because I was afraid to put it down <laughs> and like send the spring flying across the shop. Yeah, but. So yeah, the only the only sketchy part I think was probably yeah, holding the, the holding new that fully compressed spring in my hand. Fill the cylinder with compressed air. Yeah, to hold the valves closed. Yep. And then just literally you pop off the old seal, put it in it's like a hat. Like it sits on top. We of, were done in like an hour and a half. Yeah. It took way less time than I expected it to. Yeah. I thought we were gonna be there all night. Yeah, we were not. I thought things were gonna go flying into the air. They did not. <laughs> it went way too smoothly. I think we were like three quarters of the way done, and I was like, this is going way too smoothly, and you and your dad yelled at me. Yeah. Never say that, but it was fine, because... I was waiting for it to be like, bing, yeah. and like, just one of the keepers <laughs> go flying across. No, it continued to go smooth, and everything went back together, and it's just, it's fun to learn a new thing, and uh, it's not difficult, and I've like not bought cars before, because it's like, needs new valve seals, but I think from now on, I won't let that stop me from buying a car, because it wasn't that difficult to do. No. It was especially easy because it's an eight valve four cylinder, not like a you know twenty four valve, you know twin cam, something a little bit more special. Well, yeah, some some cars you probably would have to take the cams out. This one is fine. No the cam was out. No the cam sat in it. Oh, we pulled the rocker arms off. That's what we did. Yeah, because yeah, it has yeah, a, yeah. a a rocker shaft assembly. Yeah, that's right too. So that comes out, but some cars, you know, the cams might have to come out, and then the timing belt would have to come off. But, yeah, I mean, it's not that. It, it's not the end of the world. It's the same thing I say every time, that once you do a hard car job, you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all lefty, loosey, righty, tidy, and everything goes back together the same yeah. way it came apart. Exactly. Except for a couple of bolts in the front of the engine are lefty, tidy, righty, loosey, but... Usually on gears and whatnot, mm-hmm. but whatever. It was uh, it was a nice experience to know it went smoothly and to know that it actually fixed the problem. Yep. So there I'm looking go. forward to driving it again. Hopefully tomorrow night I can look into the brakes a little more, put some fluid in it, see where it's leaking out of, um, and tune the carb and hope for the best. Because like I said, that's all it really needs, and I think we are slated to work on it tomorrow night. So fingers crossed that it does it, and uh, mm-hmm. we'll be good to go. It's good that it's put together and running again now because we don't have to, like, push it around anymore. Yep. Because that truck weighs a lot for a tiny little truck. Yes, it does. Like, over 4,000 pounds. And soon <laughs> soon you can go off-road with it again. Yes, which would be very nice, actually. Which, actually, there's a off-road event this weekend, but we'll be ready for that. Yeah. Plus, we had to deliver your truck anyway, so mm-hmm. never mind. But, yeah, that's it. That's all we've done. Uh, you been in any scale? Project cars yet? Coming up in wintertime. It's cold out. No, but I did revamp my entire living room. Yeah. So I will have um, area to work again. Yeah. So that's good. I needed that. So hopefully. I mean, I bought a few new Hot Wheels cars here and there. Yeah, I, I got to set up my stuff. I did pick up for model. Uh, I'll take some pictures maybe later of the new um, scale project car garage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nerd. Nerd alert. Yeah, a little 164th scale uh, garage for the cars <laughs> to take pictures in because I am a giant nerd when it comes to diecast cars. I put my little cars in, in my little garage. garage with a little lift and little loading doors. Yeah, the diecast company Greenlight just released like series of garages. Hey, you know what your little cars have in common with your big ones? They don't actually run. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're working on it. I'll be out. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. Uh, anyway, this, the diecast company Greenlight came out with a series of uh, garages, and they have three vintage gas stations and one like home garage. Hmm. So I bought the little one sixty four scale home garage. To... So when we're talking about these Hot Wheels cars, I can take pictures of them in front of or in the garage, and mm-hmm. I don't know, just a nerdy little thing I thought would be good for the podcast uh, Instagram page. I saw. Well, you gave me the R thirty one Skyline. Yes. 
the red and black one. Yep. That is a sweet looking casting. It is. It's a replica of J. Co. I don't know his name. Yeah. Um, he's a giant diecast car fan mm-hmm. and owns that car in real life. Mm-hmm. So actually, there was he, pictures of it at SEMA with he, RPF. Yeah, he ones. was in the Anki booth yeah. at SEMA. Uh, and he's been at uh, JCCS. And he's part of the Team Wild Cards. But so. it's like a really nice casting and then the like really detailed, was it, you call it Tampo? When they, Tampo is the D, yeah. yeah. There's like headlights and taillights. Like it has taillights and the side, the R31 double overhead cam. It was a double overhead cam turbo stickers on the, mm-hmm. on the rocker panels. It's a really good one. Yeah, it's a cool one. And I'm then a I, fan. I've got two of the AMG cars now. Excellent. The, uh, Evos. Yep. So I can open one. I did the same thing. I bought two of them for the same reason. Because we're nerds. Speaking of being nerdy, what are we doing soon, Andrew? What? Well, we're going somewhere. Oh. Ah. So, for those of you who listen to us, you probably listen to some other podcasts. Um, these podcasts are Driving Well Awesome. It's Driving Well Awesome, Camden Tubbed, yeah. and, and Clutch Kick. Clutch Kick. And now the main sponsor is Jalopnik. Yes. They're holding a car show December 2nd in Los Angeles. Called Radwood 2. 2. Electric Bugaloo. Yes. <laughs> and it is for 80s and 90s cars and the culture that surrounds them. So the whole point is that everybody's going to show up with 80s and 90s cars and dress 80s and 90s. Yep. And there's going to be 80s and 90s music playing. Yep. And I think there's going to be like a BMX competition yep. or display. Yep. And some other stuff they haven't talked about publicly yet. So there's going to be movie cars there. Yep. Um it's pretty cool. Yeah. So so we're actually going to we're California. We're actually going to go to California yeah. and check it out because we felt like we'd be missing out if we didn't go. As one of the hosts of the show would say, we're definitely going to be there. Hundo P. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I already have tickets booked and everything all ready to go. So yep. it's going to be a good time, and I'm really excited to go. We don't have a car to go in, obviously, because yes. the other side of the country. If, if somebody has an extra Radwood eligible car and they would like to let us borrow it to Oh, that'd have be it awesome. show up. That'd be really cool. I didn't, I, I didn't think about asking the audience for Other, a car. Otherwise, we'll just Uber over there and hang out. And yes. I'm going to take a lot of pictures. And we're going to hang out with a bunch of people that we've Did only you known through the India. <laughs> no. You know, you know, Leica? You know, you know, I like it, whatever it is. You know, no. You're not bringing a period correct camera? No. Well, I'll bring my OM2. All right. Excellent. My Olympus OM2, yeah. I'll take some film photos. So that's December 2nd, which is actually in like three weeks. Yes. Two and a half weeks? It's at the Phoenix Club in Anaheim, California. Yep. And then I think on the Sunday after, we have a late flight out. We're going to go to the Peterson again because sure. I love going there. Yeah, and plus a new display in a few of the rooms. Do the vault tour. Um, I've never done that. Yeah, the vault tour is pretty sweet. And then just some other stuff along around Los Angeles area. So just a quick turnaround but uh yeah we're gonna be there for two days but it's totally worth it it is totally worth it i think there's some other we're talking about some other east coast people are flying out too so it'll be there cool are to see other people out there and there are so it'll be cool to meet some of the other podcasts in person hopefully they'll uh not, it'll give us a time of day when we get there you know <laughs> uh, yeah i mean i was i was gonna bring the recorder uh maybe you and i will do something possibly um no we'll definitely try to i gotta get some more stickers uh, I'm oh, for bring, sure. I'm, I'm going to help you with that, too. I'm going to bring stickers. So if you see us and you want stickers, ask me for some. If you know what we look like, <laughs> you see us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because we're going to be in, well, I don't know what exactly my costume is going to be. I don't want to say costume. You don't have to be a costume. No, you can just, just be inspired. Dress. Yeah, inspired yeah. by. Well, we talked about it in the show before when we when it first ha- when it first was advertised. Yeah. And we didn't really promote it terribly. We should have. We didn't. Um, but for those that don't know what Radwood is, I don't want to spend too much time on it because the other podcasts have really beaten it down. So, um, it's a modern interpretation of, or a more modern interpretation of Goodwood in England, yep. which Goodwood is cars from like 1960 Goodwood something revival. Down. Yeah. Yeah. And you go dressed in the era of the car you bring from you know, the teens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, or sixties. Yeah. So it's that for the new generation of car enthusiasts, mm-hmm. those that are into the 80s and 90s cars. Yeah, so... It's going to be pretty sweet. Be pretty I'm, sweet. like, super excited now. Like, really excited. Yep. 
Well, anyways. I'm really excited. Um, what else is going on? There was a Montero on the cover of Outdoor X4. I believe it's Outdoor by 4. Is it Outdoor by 4? I don't know. That's why I've been calling it. See, I, I, said X, I said X4 at the woman at the bookstore said by 4, and I was like, hmm. I didn't think of saying it that way. Yeah, that makes more sense. It does make sense. Yeah. Yep. 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 So I couldn't find it at the bookstore. They didn't have it at Barnes & Noble? Nope. I asked her. I actually, somebody had a picture of it on Instagram of like getting it. So I actually zoomed in on their photo and got the UPC code and had her look it up. She's like, well, it shows that we normally carry it, but this was like last week. Mm -hmm. She's like, they come in on Wednesdays, the, the magazine shipment. So I was like, all right, I'll come back Thursday or Friday. So I went back Thursday, nothing. I went Maybe back regional. I went back Monday, nothing. So then I was like, well, let me go downtown Salem. And I forgot that the red line no longer exists. Is just a smoke shop. Yeah. Oh, it used to be in downtown Salem for those that aren't local. It was yeah. Red Line Smoke Shop. But they had a huge magazine section and, and model a comic cars. book section <laughs> and a model car section. And a cigar section, obviously, because it's a smoke shop. And everything smelled cigars. Yeah, like, you bought a bottle of car, and you brought it home and opened it up, and it smelled like cigars inside the box. But whatever. They had a cool selection of stuff in there. But apparently, times have changed, and they closed down all of that, went to a smaller storefront, and just sell cigars, lottery, and newspapers now. So, yeah, he wouldn't have gotten... Cigar it. enthusiast magazines. Oh, do they sell those, too? Yes. I haven't been in there yet. I went in there, and I was like, oh, you don't have magazines like you used to. He's like... And he's like, nope, just, uh, <laughs> just puffing on a cigar, just Cigar Enthusiast Magazine. He's like, all right, thanks. That's funny. It used to be a favorite stop to go to because they always had model cars in there. And actually, I missed when they had a big sale on them, too, which I, made me really upset. They probably yeah. pretty much gave So them I don't know where <laughs> really you buy magazines anymore. Other, other than, than Barnes & Noble? Yeah. 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 So that's like all bookstores are like dead. Stupid Amazon. That's That's what happens. But Amazon has a brick and mortar store like not far from here. Actually, you could probably buy Outdoor by Four on Amazon if you wanted to. No, what I did instead was I went to their website and I just oh, a, okay. a year one year subscription was twenty five dollars. Oh, because your one issue is probably eight dollars anyway. So I was like, all right, I'll just subscribe to it for a year. Of course, it's going to start with next month's issue and you're going to miss that. See, one. I did put in the note. I was like, please include issue twenty three. Okay. So hopefully, a human reads that and they send me the current issue. Yeah, they probably will anyway. Um, but yeah, that. So, hopefully, I'll get that soon. And no, the Montero on the cover belongs to it's an Instagram user, Gon Durton, right? Who is uh, one of the? It's Limburg from Speed Hunters is yes. one of yep. the people that runs that account. Yep, and I believe it's his, his girlfriend or wife, significant or other. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the photos are amazing. They're really good pictures. Um, I don't know how he does it. To be honest with you, yeah, I have an idea. But uh, I haven't had a time to try it to reverse engineer well, it's, it yet. It's lighting more than anything else. He has really good lighting on everything. Uh, there's lighting and I think some Post composite editing, yeah. photo editing, o overlaying and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Either way, it's really good. The, it's actually a technique I've been meaning to try and I haven't had a chance to yet. So that got me thinking. Like, I kind of stopped buying auto magazines. Like I used to buy them all the time. Like. Yeah, every, once a month yeah, on a Friday a when I got yeah. paid, I'd go down to Barnes and Noble and buy a couple magazines, had a coffee and relax. That was yeah. lunch break. I did the same thing when I worked at one fourteen. And uh, when I was working at Cambridge, there wasn't any newsstands that had good car magazines. Which so is I kind of stopped because Cambridge used to be full of newsstands. Well, even the main Cambridge newsstand, like in Harvard Square, didn't have any good car magazines. Oh, the train station. So I was like, oh, okay, that's weird. I guess Cambridge isn't really a car price place either, maybe. No. Yeah. It's not. It's probably a lot of tattoo magazines. Yeah. <laughs> what was uh, your favorite print magazine? Uh, recently or ever? Whatever. Well, re more recently, it would have been Hemming Sports and Exotic Car. That doesn't exist anymore? Nope, it's gone. 100% gone. And not because my car was featured in it. Or my father's car was featured in it, yeah. but because it was the only magazine that would do an article on cars like cars that I own mm -hmm. um, or cars that are, they'd have everything from an article about a Lamborghini Countach yep. to my Plymouth Sapporo mm -hmm. and anything that didn't fit in any other of their Hemings magazines. They have the collectible, you know, classic, Hemings classic car, um, they have, I think they have a truck magazine. Uh, they have a few different magazines, but those sports and exotic car was just kind of 
a catch-all for imported cars more than anything else. Part of it is I stopped reading them. Like, even when I had Auto Week coming to my house, I wasn't reading it. Okay. I don't know why. It just, like, came too often for me. to. I was like, oh, there it is. I'll get to it. And then, like, all of a sudden another one shows up. See, I liked Auto Week, too, only because they also had an article about one of my cars. <laughs> yeah. No, Auto Week's solid. And yeah, it's, it's good. It's a good magazine. I might subscribe to it again. And actually, one of our friends writes for it. Yeah. So. You know a couple people. Yeah. You know a few people that write for it. I'm thinking, actually, of one. Actually, that kind of thing of it. One of the guys running Radwood writes for it. Yeah. So that's cool. Yep. And then uh, who else? It was local guy. Jay. Jay. Yep. Um, so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of neat. And then. Uh, I always loved my favorite was Sport Compact Car. Oh, 100%. That's, well, that was due to time because when we were really getting into like our talons, yeah. that was the magazine that had all the tech articles about Sport Compact Cars. Which had the people that ran that now run Moto IQ. Online magazine. Online. Which I always forget to go to. Yeah. But it's great, though. It is. 100% great. That's mostly, what's his name, right? Um, Mike Kojama. Yeah, Mike Kojama, Kojima, Kojama and... Uh, Dave. I don't think Dave writes for it anymore. Oh, no? No, he's like an actual engineer. Okay. Because he always said my favorite projects. Yep. <laughs> that, uh, yeah, the, the dots and the 510 popped just up. popped like, up in New York. It was like New York City somewhere. Yeah, really kind of weird. For some reason, downtown New York City. <laughs> uh, that was a really good one. My other favorite one was from England. Um, I used to buy it every single month. but at It 10- was cheaper to actually buy it at the newsstand than to subscribe. It was. It. Yeah. Um, because it was, for a while, it was $7 an issue at the newsstand. Yeah. It's up to like $12 an issue now. Does it I mean, still exist? It still exists, yeah. I didn't see it at Barnes no. & Noble. Oh, it's still there. It's usually in the top left corner of the of the thing. What about um, it? That's like $12 an issue. Yeah. Um, it's almost worth it because it's a big format, and it's all gloss, and it's more like a book style, like coffee table book, than a magazine. Yeah, retro cars. Yeah, retro cars, yeah. Um, but it's at twelve dollars an issue. It's hard to stomach sometimes. I noticed a couple of the people that I uh, I've seen in that magazine uh, writing and shooting in it are also on Speed Hunters now. Every every now and then, yeah, because so. the photography is really yeah. the photography. Of the magazine's always been really good. The British magazines in general have always like had I feel better photography. It was a then. totally different style of photography. Yeah, using well, they use like a, lot, a and lot of strobes yeah. and light boxes and all that kind of stuff, which started. Getting me to do that, and I haven't done it in a while. So no, we haven't actually. I don't think we've done it since no. with the talent in the garage, right? No. Yeah, we should get back on that. Yep, that's something to do. We need to step up our game, Andrew. <laughs> we have all the equipment. Yep, I do. <laughs> it's just sitting here. So those were good. I mean, but there's always been other ones. I remember you always had growing up. You always had all the car magazines at your house, didn't you? Yes, all of them. Well, my father owned a body shop. Yeah, so he would subscribe to all of them. And then read them and then bring them in, like, the waiting room of the body shop. Oh, all right. So we had Road and Track, Car and Driver, Motor Trend, and Automobile. Every month, all four magazines. We also used to get um, Old Cars, Old Cars Monthly, and then there were, I think it was Old Cars Weekly, and then Hemmings. And there was literally, like, a new magazine at the house every single day. Nice. So it was it was pretty awesome. It was really, really kept me interested in that kind of stuff. I, I mean, that was one of my treats, like, whenever we'd go on a trip or something, like, my parents would always buy me a magazine. Yeah, to read I'd, in the car. Yeah. I'd, because we didn't have electronics. Yeah, I'd get to pick a car <laughs> magazine, and then I'd usually read, like, every single thing in it. And it, it depended on my mood. Sometimes i get, like, a European car. It totally depended on what was on the cover. Yeah. Like. Which it still does to this day. Like, yeah. you just shared that picture with me today of whatever sport compact car magazine that is. S3. S3? Yeah. Okay, a speed style or something or other? Yeah, they did the cover like a Hot Wheels package. Okay, a big Hot Wheels package. Which actually, yeah, come to think of it, I'll probably go try to find that. Yeah, that was a cool... Because it's kind of neat looking. I don't think the magazine's very good, though. I kind of like the cover, though. Yeah. Um, from a design standpoint, I like the cover. Another thing I've always liked is um, brand-specific magazines sometimes, too. Yeah. For a car that I either, I either own or... Have, Excellence, Porsche. I don't really read Excellence. Or is it... Um, <laughs> Excellence is, it is the Porsche magazine. Yeah. Is that the one that Jeff Swart always has? Is that the right Probably. One? There's a couple There's a couple different ones. Yeah. I think that's the one that I'm thinking of. I, um, think, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but I've always read a lot of air-cooled Volkswagen magazines. Yes. Yeah. Because I love air-cooled Volkswagens, even though I don't own any. Yeah. I like to keep up on the trends and the products. Because I know someday I'm going to own one. 
So I do like to keep up on those. So I, I read like uh, was it Hot Bugs and Hot Bugs and Hot 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 VW? Yeah, I think it's one of them. Um, there's a few of those. A couple of American ones, a couple of British ones. I used to like Modified was good for a while. Yeah, um, I think they kind of went downhill too, though. Yeah, I really enjoyed I mean. Zero to Sixty. Yes. When it existed. Yep. That was an interesting magazine. Yeah. Well, that was Brian Scotto, right? Yeah. Who yeah. does Hoonigan now? Yep. It was just, it was had like really good photography, like really interesting stories. Yeah. They had, they had, that was another thing too, where they had everything from really grassroots stuff yeah. to really high end stuff. Speaking of which, grassroots motorsports is another one that they used to like a lot. Still exists. Still yeah. great. Yep. Um, I say used to like a lot, not because they're bad now, but because I don't really read that many magazines anymore. Yeah, for whatever reason, I just don't. Uh, Classic Bike is another favorite of mine. Yeah? It's all um, mostly 60s and 70s motorcycles. Oh, I used to really love uh, RC Car Action. Oh, yeah. That was a good one, too. I've got a ton of those from the 90s. They all have, like, neon covers. Neon everything. (laughs) I don't know. That was just the the way you got your information. Yeah, because the internet Um, wasn't so prevalent. You know, it kind of stinks. I mean... you know, that that sort of went away. Well, it was cool because you kept the ones you wanted to keep and you had that information at your fingertips all the time. Yeah. And I don't know. It's just not the same reading things on the Internet. Like, I've never downloaded a magazine on the Internet. No. You know, no. It's, not, it's not the same. I mean, there's several really good blogs like Speedhunters and stuff that I love looking at. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's not the same. Like, But even think of that. Speedhunters released a book. Because yes. they wanted to release a book, and people bought yeah. it, and it's a cool book, and yeah. I just couldn't afford it at the time, so I didn't buy it. But I mean, there's different. It's just I don't know. It's just different. World's changing around us, old man. Yeah, keep up with the times. No, I do keep up with the times. I mean, it's just like I was talking to the guy who runs the regional magazine for the SCCA for our group. And oh, big talk. It's, yeah, but they're not going to do a print anymore. Just kind of the internet. Of it's gonna be internet. So I was talking about expense is a big thing on that because mm-hmm. it's not a magazine they charge for. Nope. Like it costs every member. Mm-hmm. It's part of the membership package. Yep. So if they don't sell enough advertising in it, they're yeah. gonna lose it, and it's hard to sell advertising in a dying media. Yeah. I mean, just to be straight up honest. So we were just talking about different ways to sort of modernize it and still because it, you still want it to exist because it is a record of the club mm-hmm. and it is you know, you know keeps track of like results and. Well, you, you can know, even just do a blog format. Meeting notes. Yeah, there's so, several different ideas for yeah. it. So even if you just sent out the same exact thing as a PDF to people yeah. or charged people extra for a print version, if they wanted a print version to be sent to them, they could It'll pay. It probably cost a lot extra to make up the difference for all those that didn't want it, though. Yeah, you'd be surprised. It's It can be done. Okay. There's new things, print on demand, so... All right. Well, we need auto off topic magazine then. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we do need to put together a blog, actually. Something on the internet. Just to uh, correct people, We've got to work on that. There are things in the works. What? What? I don't know about this. Yes, you do. Do I? Unless you've been ignoring the emails. Oh, 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 oh. I know what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. To, no, be, to be discussed later. Yeah, no promises right now. Well, um,. When we're ready, we'll let everybody know. All right. Now, if that doesn't work out, we have, we'll do something else because yeah. we need to have some kind of I thing think it, to I think it will. To. But yeah. regardless. Anyways. Yeah, speaking <laughs> of online magazines, yeah. I've never read one. We're trying to create one. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> They're great, everybody. Please start reading online magazines. It's it's different. There's different. It, there's something to it. Just no, I, I agree. <laughs> I, but I, I, I dislike the online magazine that's basically like you just said, a PDF version of the magazine you can buy at a store. Right. I'd rather go to the store and buy it because right. rather than spend $5 for the digital copy and have to wait for it to load every time, yeah. and I just don't like it. No. Um, but talking about print, I'm currently reading Magnus Walker's autobiography. Okay. Which um, it's pretty interesting. He's an interesting character. I, mean, I, I didn't imagine realize a lot. I've only heard bits and pieces of his backstory on different podcasts that he's been on. Yep. I didn't know what clothing line he had started yep. and owned. And yeah, I watched a biography on somewhere on and him. And then it was like, it was like big at like Hot Topic in the 90s. Like it was just right place, right time. Like yeah. he just capitalized on. Well, the best part of his whole story was that he was wearing a pair of jeans that he bought somewhere else. And that's how he started the whole thing. Somebody's like, oh, I like your jeans. Where'd no, you get that's them? not actually. He said that's not. He just 
Oh, really? It was just one thing that kind of, he didn't really realize it at the time. And then it was later on. It was just, uh, the guy was just a model of like hard work and then just capitalizing on opportunities that show up and just being able to make things work. Yeah. Well, he did well because now he owns lots of Porsches. Yeah. Like lots of Porsches. Yeah. So, uh, it's pretty interesting. So, and he seems like a pretty genuine dude too. Like it doesn't seem like he's a, it doesn't seem like, guy. yeah. Like if you just met him, he'd just be very normal down to earth from hearing interviews with him. Like just cause he comes from a working class family in England. Like, Maybe he'll show up at Radwood. He's local. Hey, we'll see. I know so there's a few people of note that will be there. So mm-hmm. that'll be cool. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Well, anyways, anything else? Uh, I don't think so. All right. I think we'll call that a podcast. Episode 60 in the books. Well on our way to 100. Yes. <laughs> so um, you can follow us, Auto Off Topic Podcast, on Facebook, on Instagram, Auto Off Topic. You can follow me, Race and Anger. You can email us at uh, Auto Off Topic at gmail.com. You've heard the bumper ad in the beginning. Don't forget, the coloring contest ends on November 30th. Which is this month? quickly, quickly approaching. Yes. Uh, we have tons of cool prizes. So if there are entries, we'll probably have to do the judging while we're in California. Or but, after we go or back. After. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so that's going on. Brad, where can they find you? Uh, my personal Instagram is TSISS350. Yep. Um, my business page, uh, Vintage Imports of NE on Instagram, mm-hmm. also on Facebook. Yep. And that's it. All right. So please rate and review us on iTunes. And, of course, share. Thanks for listening. And keep the cards analog.